We're covered in microbes from our tops to our toes. They outdate us, outnumber us, outsmart us, protect us, but they can also harm us. For the most part, our immune system's smart. It knows when to stop or to start, eliminating microbes that are evolutionary foes. Take influenza, for example, a virus that's quite simple, the size of a needle tip, invisible. Just eight genes wrapped in some surface proteins. For sure, you've all had influenza, that familiar sore throat and fever. For a week, you feel weak. You blame the girl or guy you kissed last week. But not all of you will be so lucky. I wonder how many of you have thought about deaths from flu, because it's killed millions before you. Just look back a generation or two. In the past 100 years, influenza has killed 100 million of your peers. You see, the surface protein genes are changing. In fact, they're changing all the time, rearranging. So our immune memory stops recognizing the same viruses; it stops from thriving. So there's already a vaccine, I hear you proclaim, but the annual vaccine is an absolute pain, because all we can currently maintain. Is a vaccine against this year's circulating strain. You see, vaccination's a trick with a harmless mimic to make your immune system think quick. Let's protect, defend, counterattack. But that harmless mimic in the annual vaccine is, is far too specific to protect from the sudden changes that cause a pandemic. The real trick is to make vaccine immunity stick. Irrespective of the strain you pick, in our research group we see opportunity in some influenza proteins that show continuity. So, irrespective of strain, they're always the same. But it's funny. We've shown these proteins alone can induce immunity, but our immune system doesn't take that opportunity. Perhaps it's because they're hard to see when surrounded by seemingly bigger priorities. So our work focuses on improving their visibility in a vaccine that makes them the priority to the cells that trigger long-lasting influenza immunity. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ajibla Ramakie. You got it right. And that was a three-minute summary of my PhD thesis in poetic verse. I'm sure you'll agree it was easier to understand than. Development of a subcomponent pandemic influenza vaccine using the adjuvant vector CTA1DD. <laughs> But jokes aside, I'm a physician and a researcher. I'm told I don't dress like one. But effective communication in my field can be the difference between life and death. Creative communication can result. An improved vaccine uptake during an infectious disease outbreak. It can also help with the uptake of public health messages such as social distancing or hand washing. So, given the importance of engagement and communication, you might find it surprising to hear that scientists aren't routinely trained to communicate with the public. The public who they serve. We are, however. Trained to communicate in scientific literature, we're constantly chasing publications. The problem with these publications is that many sit behind paywalls. Even if they're open access, the scientific language which we're required to use in these papers is a barrier for wider understanding. It's my feeling, and I'm sure many of you agree, that the total impact of anyone's research. Can't be defined by which papers they publish in. It should be defined by how many people, how many people the research reaches, how many people are affected by the work, who else is interested. Visual communication methods help to prevent this barrier caused by language, whether it's your, whether it's the fact that you're non-English speaking. Or whether it's because you just don't understand the scientific terminology, and the world has never been better connected. 
Millions of people communicate using visual communication, from emojis to selfies, on lots of social media platforms. But scientists are largely not part of the discussion. The only way we can join this discussion is by promoting engagement from junior researchers right through to senior researchers and institutions. We need to use these visual communication tools to engage. We need to be creative. Engagement is important for many reasons. It's important for trust and accountability, particularly for publicly funded researchers. Engagement is important for understanding the impact of your work. It also helps promote innovation by identifying potential new areas of need. It's also very important for ensuring that people are ready to take on your innovations when they're ready. What use is a new drug if no one wants to use it because they don't understand or trust how it was produced? So this lack of communication training led to my action, Explain Artist. And it was the lack of visual communication training that was most obvious for me to reduce the impact of scientific language. So Explain Artist is a not-for-profit organization headquartered in Gothenburg, Sweden. We help researchers transform their research ideas into visuals that are easy to understand and share. And we use a number of creative techniques but the focus is using visuals, again, to remove the scientific language barrier. In little over a year, we've developed an international team that's unique in combining professional visualizers with science communicators who are experienced in their relative fields across health, technology, environment. We're working on a number of pilot projects this example from Gothenburg Science Festival shows a workshop that we ran with both children and adults, and it highlighted the importance of being neutral to your audience. In actual fact, the children who joined this workshop far outperformed the adults. We are now part of the mandatory training for doctoral students in the Biomedical Institute at our home university. All the PhD students undertake engagement and visualization training as part of their enrollment. We also help research startups visualize their innovations to potential investors, helping their research grow to a next level and grow out of academia. But let me focus on what I think is even more impressive in terms of the potential of using visual communication and engaging with the public. Incidence of malignant melanoma, a form of skin cancer, is increasing in countries all over the world. It's an important public health issue. Early diagnosis and treatment by a dermatologist is essential for a good prognosis. However, as I said, incidence is rising. The number of dermatologists is declining, and people are too embarrassed to show their moles. So Explain Artist is teamed up with the dermatologists at the University Hospital in Gothenburg, yeah, it's called Sargorenska University Hospital, to create a visual protocol that helps members of the public identify high-risk moles. And we do that using photographs. These photographs are taken on dermoscopes, special cameras that take high-resolution images that are made widely available across the city in convenient locations. Members of the public can privately and anonymously take photographs of their moles and beam them to the cloud. We then have a citizen science protocol, and citizen science is a platform which allows for projects like this to take place. And in the Initial pilot, our aim is to identify how many members of the public do we need to review an image to be as accurate as a professional dermatologist. But the key point is that visualization is the key to unlocking the potential of the crowd. By simplifying the diagnostic protocol 
and simplifying the jargon that's used by uh, researchers and clinicians alike, we can include a lot more people and solve a very difficult research problem. And the crowd? It's vast. In 2014, the most popular citizen science platform, Zooniverse, boasted well over a million members, all helping researchers around the world with a number of difficult scientific questions. So it doesn't matter if we need 10 or 20 people to review in order to be the same as a clinician, because we have access to hundreds of thousands, possibly millions. Now, hopefully, for the researchers amongst you in the room, that's been convincing enough to say that it's important to visualize and to find creative ways to engage. My time is coming up. I'm going to end with another rhyme. It'll be shorter this time. Researchers, all that time spent in the lab means something. But research without engagement means nothing. Don't limit yourself to scientific publication. Engage, be creative, and be inspiring. Thank you for listening.